So now when we speak of sort of experience as such, right, which you can do, and if you printed this out, you're not going to be able to see the color contrast because it all, unless you have a color printer. My printer is obviously not color. Um, so maybe you will see the color contrast, but on the PDF it's color, right? It doesn't really matter what the colors are. But imagine that this is the totality of experience, right? And part of this experience is blue, right? And the other part of this experience is green. Let's, for example, say, we'll say that this part of experience relates to the it, and this part of experience relates to the thou. And imagine that here we are as uh, perceivers in the world. I should, probably shouldn't have drawn this blue. Um, and actually, I'm not going to draw this blue. I'll draw this black. And far too often, what we believe incorrectly is that all of experience is defined in terms of this, right? So that we sort of, like, we fill ourselves up with, with just it, right? That, that's it. And for Buber, this is incorrect, right? Incorrect. It's not that, you know, this is, and this is the totality. Right? This is the, to the totality of experience. So, um, you have a part of our experience that is, if we're talking about the totality of experience, and we recognize that the totality of, of experience is, is defined in terms of relational experience, and relational experience is itself defined in terms of the I-Thou, relational experience and the I-it relational experience, it is incorrect to assume that the totality of experience can be defined in terms of the I-it relational experience. For Buber, you're missing a huge uh, experiential component of our existence if you fail to describe our relational experience in terms of the thou, or you totally describe our relational experience in terms of just the I-it. So it should look more like this, right? It should look more like, and this is just, you know, sort of gross, uh, gross uh, visual, so you sort of get what's going on. It should look, look more like, uh, should look more like this, right? A little bit of both. It should look more like, not like this, more like that. Okay, so uh, I think the visual, the visual works. And um, what is an example of this? Uh, I'm going to, at this point in the lecture, stay away from religious examples. I'll give you sort of a, um, a spiritualistic uh, example. Um, I was watching this video on YouTube about DMT. It's like this, this super potent hallucinogenic uh, component. Um, and, you know, people took this, took this drug and, and they, you know, they, they, they hallucinate. But it's not just that they feel that they're hallucinating. They're not just saying, well, you know, parts of my, my, um, my, my neural circuitry is now saturated with a compound that is inducing a state of euphoria or bliss or hallucination. They actually, the participants actually believe that they experience some transcendental reality, right? They all talk in terms of sort of disembodied consciousness and, you know, uh, and all of that. And none of them, None of them, absolutely, at least from the videos that I watched, none of them described their experience in sort of these sort of pedantic scientific terms, right? No, I recognize what happened. I was injected with a drug. The drug saturated, you know, uh, my neural circuitry, induced a state of, you know, uh, hallucinetic uh, hallucinations or bliss or whatever it might be. Um, and I recognize now that it was just a sense and, you know, it was just sort of neural juices flowing. They all say that I had this transcendental experience, this experience of some spiritual or supernatural entity or entities and blah, 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 blah. What it shows is that there's other, there's other modes of perceiving the world, right? There are alternate modes of consciousness. This is only readily apparent when you drink too much or if you, you know, you smoke dope or you shoot heroin or whatever it is that you do or you smoke a cigarette, or, right? You change your perception of the world. Um, you can think of, you know, and this is just gross, right? Later we'll get more precise, but just to sort of invite a larger audience into the discussion, you can think of it as, obviously then it has to be true, 
right? You don't have to go as far as a religious experience, but it has to be true from an epistemological standpoint that our, the totality of our experience really isn't understood in terms of exclusively stuff. Right? There is some other forms of, uh, at least in theory, some other forms that could at least be, there's no contradiction certainly in understanding um, experience that's different from the norm. Right, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, I'll leave it at that for now. Alright, so um, the world then of the it, right, the world of the it is bound by connections between things, right? The world of the it, as we said, is bound by connections between things. So in my attempt to understand the it, the realm of the it, since I am part of that connection in the world, I can come to understand more of myself. Since the relational experience between myself and the thou is unbound, um, though I can come to understand modes of interpretation within myself, I really, for, for Buber, and I'm jumping the gun here, but I'm about to give you some of this in a second, I really have a better understanding of the eternal. Um, he would call it the eternal thou. Don't worry about that right now. I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But I, I come to have a better understanding of the eternal, that sort of level of sort of consciousness, right? And there, there, there should be um, in epistemological, scientific investigations into sort of this other consciousness, right? If, if, if we can make, even make sense of it. Now, um, for Buber, it's important that we recognize that distinction and sort of the recognition that part of our consciousness is going to be defined in terms of our relational experience to other things, and part of our consciousness is going to be defined in relation to our experience in a very loose sense to, you can't, you really don't even have words for this, right? Our experience to the infinite. Um, it's the union of that, that, that is, that is powerful, right? So sort of, now I'm going to take a quick tangent off, right? Sort of this arbitrary separation between religion and science that's huge in the states it's not so big in Europe but you know in the states you know you know you're either an academic or you're a theologian but you're not going to be both uh, a spiritual or religious person and an academic right that's that's that for Buber that would be ridiculous why, why are you separating the two right you can both be religious and an academic or even a scientist or a hard scientist right um, or, or, or spiritual if you don't like the word religious right but to just say that all that exists is this and that's it for Buber He's not, he's not going to have that. <laughs> Alright, um, so you can see that this is going to contrast Ayn Rand pretty, pretty drastically. Uh, Randians aren't going to, Randians aren't going to buy this at all. And it's, you know, it would be a fun debate between Randians and um, uh, uh, Buber, right? It would be, it'd be interesting. Alright, so the distinction then um, between inner and outer, when we talk about the inner self, the outer self, right? What is internally me? What is externally me? For Buber, it's absolutely ludicrous, right? It's, it's ridiculous to talk about and the distinction, a, a legitimate distinction um, between the inner eye and the outer eye, right? Um, the distinction between inner and outer is merely apparent, right? The inner me is it. It is understood in terms of it, right? Remember when we're talking about our relational experiences, right? And I should put some body on it. This guy looks all crazy. When we're talking about a relational experience, if I'm talking about the inner me, right, then I'm still talking about it, right? If I'm talking about someone's perception of me as outside, then I'm still talking about it, right? So if I'm talking about inner or if I'm talking about sort of the outer perception of me, I'm still talking about it, right? It is, it is for Buber still the it, right? It is my relational experience with myself, my relational experience with another person perceiving me. I'm still talking about um, my relational experience with, in terms of the I-it uh, relation. So this, this distinction becomes completely arbitrary. I actually think that idea is fascinating, personally. Right? Uh, I think that has huge implications. But, you know, just as a, as a side note, it's important to recognize that we sort of dissolve this arbitrary I, uh, internal, external um, representation of self, right? It's just self as it, as stuff on the I-it uh, relational experience and then the realm within the realm of the it. Alright, 